Hey, this is Zengo MD, back again. We explain food addiction and even have a test that you can take if you dispute that you're a food addict. I mean, if you're at least 20 pounds overweight, I can guarantee you that you're at least a mild food addict. And of course, when we say food addict, we mean the addiction tolerance withdrawal response to manufactured processed foods, all of them, not just the ones you think of. Everyone knows the obvious foods that they are most addicted to, that they will eat emotionally, but there are plenty more lurking under the radar. But there is a way to lose weight. See, most of us control our intake of whole, natural, homeostatic foods just fine, even if we're 100 pounds overweight. So here is how you can eat to lose while shrinking your food addiction pathways at the same time. Because if you don't shrink those pathways, your diet will fail. It's just a matter of time. You're better off not attempting to diet at all if you don't try to diet considering your food addictions. First, let's understand what hunger is. The next time you get hungry, ask yourself, if I have a celery stick or an apple right now in front of me, would I eat it? If the answer is no, but you can list a bunch of other foods like these manufactured processed foods, or maybe think about what restaurant you're willing to go to satisfy that hunger feeling that you think you have, then you're confusing hunger with cravings. Your hedonic response has hijacked the hunger urge in order to get its pathways satisfied first so you get the morphine and the dopamine hit in your brain. You cannot lose weight and keep it off if any hunger sensation is answered with a hedonic manufactured processed food. Next, you need to realize that there is no safe amount of a manufactured processed food. Look at this study. It shows how even a small amount of a manufactured processed sugar fat substance given to mice will cause the mice to eat more of their typical feed later on. And that response continued for weeks, even after that treat was removed. They ate more even of their regular food. In other words, let's say you planned on eating this, but right before or during dinner, you have a handful of this. Then by the end of your meal, you will have consumed more than you intended, even of the good natural food items, not to mention the additional calories and carbs from the snack. Like the last article and many others have found, stopping a manufactured processed food for days or weeks does not fully extinguish the urge pathways. You may think a treat here and a piece of birthday cake here and some cookies at work for three days out of an entire month is great discipline. However, intermittent consumption of manufactured processed foods has been shown to even magnify the pathways. And you've done nothing at all during this month to actually extinguish your hedonic pathway for sweet baked goods. And isn't that how so many old fashioned diets like Weight Watchers operate with those intermittent treats just to give you little doses of your pleasure pathways, but help you feel deprived all the other days? Really, if you have a month like this, the next month, you are way more likely to eat like this. Three days in a month is all you need to keep a food addiction alive. And it's more likely you will eat more the following month than go to zero. Menu is far more important than portions. If you breach the menu or substitute a food off the menu for one on the menu, but keep the calories equal, you are doing way more harm to your food addiction pathways and to your future ability to lose weight than eating an extra couple ounces of salmon or an extra apple. Remember, nobody ever got fat eating too much broccoli or any of these other whole natural foods. Even a 350 pound person knows when to stop eating broccoli if that's all they are given. The homeostatic pathways work if you let them dominate. Therefore, strict menu but lax portions will get you further than a lax menu with strict portions. Whatever you do, exclude all manufactured processed foods, even if you don't consider them addictive or craveable to you. Foods like protein shakes and bars, almond, soy, or coconut milk, peanut butter, almond butter, and of course, stuff like this, a protein cookie, really? So two of these has more protein than a four ounce chicken breast and the same amount of sugar? 
yeah, but that cookie has some sugar spiking soluble fiber and sugar alcohols that seem to just vanish from significance on the label. Remember what we said about food labels in our other video. Also look at this. When you look up foods at Nutrisystem, this is the featured item. Something between a hot pocket and a calzone. Processed to the max. And here's the first menu item listed at Jenny Craig under the favorites category. Come on. Look, these two organizations make most of their revenue selling food. Therefore, they are restaurants. Don't trust a restaurant to help teach you how to lose weight. They want to keep you as a customer forever. And if these foods are addictive, which we all agree, offering to help someone lose weight on these foods is like an alcohol addiction treatment center urging people to join because they'll give you tiny shots of beer while you're there. Finally, no drugs. No prescription drugs ever since 1959 when fentermine was first released has shown that the weight is kept off when the drug is discontinued all of them show that the weight is gained back and it's actually gained back faster than you lose it uh, therefore no drug company is going to spend the money anymore to get a short-term indication like these old-fashioned controlled stimulants have any diet pill that's coming out now are all striving to get an indication to be taken longer, if not forever. But that is not necessary. The newer agents, like this one, also leaves you gaining when it is stopped. And the weight loss while you're taking it is actually not that great and it plateaus fairly quickly. This non-stimulant was promising since it has an opiate blocker, but it is not proven to cause any better cessation of the food addiction pathway than diet alone. And over the counter is no better. This stuff prevents fat absorption, but doesn't fix food addiction and gives you hellaciously greasy stools. And any over the counter thing that talks about itself being a burner or often has caffeine or stimulants, um, and they have give you nothing except expense and side effects. Not one diet pill, prescription or over the counter, has ever been shown to cause weight loss that persists after the pill is discontinued not one ever therefore it should not be in your toolbox okay so you're ready for the plan and this really doesn't cost you anything to try you don't need to buy any special shakes or bars or prepared meals or pills um, you'll eat an entire whole food menu consisting of meat fruit vegetable and eggs stuff we have eaten for thousands of years stuff on our homeostatic menu Stuff where they can't lie on the nutrition labels. Stuff that you know when to stop eating when you feel full. Stuff that will not send any traffic down your hedonic pathways and hopefully allow your hedonic pathways to shrink. They will go from six lane highways to dirt roads if you keep this up day after day. When we are eating this menu, when we ate this menu, we were the dominant species on planet Earth. Okay? We weren't going extinct and wheat and dairy and hot dogs and bacon saved us and by the way hot dogs and bacon are not meat according to this list scrambled eggs with milk and cheese added is not eggs orange juice is not a fruit and a potato or rice cakes is not a vegetable it's not like we were going extinct and flour dairy hot pockets and all this processed food just saved us they've harmed us we're actually living longer in spite of this menu not because of it we're living longer because of medical care public safety things like that our diet is actually sabotaging us we should not be drinking our calories either limit your beverages to water and up to two cups of coffee or tea daily and are you ready for this no portion restrictions this is an all-you-can-eat buffet that never closes eat as much as you want when you want don't reduce or increase your activity. Why? Because when food addictions are present, an increase in activity is often met with an urge for hedonic food rewards. We will increase exercise later as you get closer to your goal weight, but not when we're making these major changes to our menu and are heavily challenged with the food addictions beginning to atrophy. And you wanna give yourself the best opportunities to succeed, and that's what will happen if you associate a homeostatic menu with better energy. You will get better energy eating this menu 100%. You will not need to seek out manufactured processed foods to gain energy. So don't sabotage your diet. 
Strive for eight hours of sleep per night and you'll get rewarded. Build every meal around a protein and a vegetable. Use the fruit mainly for snacks. Weigh only one time per week. You want the best way to track your progress? Try on a shirt or pants that are too tight to wear. Try them on a couple of times a week and the first day it fits, wear it that day. And then look for the next article of clothing that doesn't fit. That way tracks your body composition than the scale which can fluctuate up and down with water weight. By the end of month two, your daily activity will need to include at least 30 minutes in the fat burning zone, 60 to 70% of your max heart rate. And restaurants, forget it. Unless it has a real kitchen and you can order food off the menu with no melted butter to finish it off or these gargantuan portions that you feel like you gotta eat um, in one sitting. Now you're not gonna eat this way forever. Once you get to your goal weight, you can begin transitioning out by reintroducing selected processed foods only once a week. If you get bloated or gassy at this point, then you likely have an intolerance to the wheat or dairy ingredient used. On the days you do eat processed food, learn how to manage the cravings because they're going to be there the next day. You have to resist the inevitable cravings that will come the next day. Remember, most people tend to cheat on the weekends compared to during the week. Have you ever seen the drive through lines at fast food restaurants on Mondays at lunch? People overeat for the weekend and then they crave Monday lunch. They switch their plans. They don't want to eat their packed food or they stop and get fast food to keep the addictive surge going into the week. If you get hurt or cannot exercise, you need to cut back your intake accordingly. It's This will not happen automatically. Injuries are the single most common trigger for a significant weight gain episode other than a menu change. And finally, if you find that you're gaining weight, you should never accept two consecutive scale weight gains in a row. If this happens, you need to go back to the 100% homeostatic weight loss menu again. The best way to prevent gaining weight is to stop it before it becomes a multi-week addiction building problem. So there you go. All you can eat buffet of meat, fruit, vegetable, and eggs. Just try it. If you still struggle, well, that's where we come in and we can systematically figure out hormonal, lifestyle, and genetic factors that may remain as barriers to your success. Remember, no drugs, no cheating. That's the best way to extinguish the cravings. Then when you're at your goal, limit the craveable foods just one day a week at first. Do you know an alcoholic who only drinks on Saturday? Or someone who smokes two packs of cigarettes on Saturday and smokes nothing the rest of the week? Right. So when you extinguish an addiction, it is hard to reestablish it if you limit the frequency of use. Well, let us know how you do below. And thanks for watching. Please follow us on these other platforms.